Welcome to the 12th episode of First Edition, the all things comics, film, and pop culture web show. I'm George of YouTube channel Uncanny George, and this is my web show. First, in comics, film, and pop culture news, uh, free comic book day, May 2nd, uh, coming very soon. Uh, for more information on free comic book day, check out www.freecomicbookday.com and you can see tons of previews. Uh, there's over 50 issues or 50 comic books that are going to be uh, for gra up for grabs on free comic book day. Uh, comics range from Marvel's Avengers, Titan Comics' Doctor Who, uh, IDW's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and even Kodansha Comics' Attack on Titan. For more information, go to www.freecomicbookday.com and you can uh, check out previews, uh, check out all the comics, they're all up there. You can also see a video, uh, actor Mark Hamill, uh, Luke Skywalker, uh, does a video endorsing Free Comic Book Day. You can also see where you can find the nearest participating comics vendor. Again, that's freecomicbookday.com, May 2nd. Go get some free comics. Uh, the next piece of news is, uh, I was so excited to see the, the new Star Wars trailer of The Force Awakens. Uh, it's just a teaser trailer that came out at the uh, Star Wars convention in Anaheim and uh, I was really excited to see it and I'm really looking forward to the full trailer that actually comes out with Avengers Age of Ultron which comes out on uh, May 2nd of 2015 and then the uh, the full trailer for Batman vs Superman I believe comes out with Mad Max Fury Road which debuts on May 15th of 2015 so I'm really excited to see both of those full trailers and of course I want to see the movies so if you're excited to see either of those trailers be sure to go check out Avengers Age of Ultron which comes out May 2nd and Mad Max Fury Road which comes out May 15th the next piece of news is that Stephen Amell uh, the star of the, the CW television series Arrow has signed on to play Casey Jones in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles sequel. Uh, I'm really, really excited for this because uh, Stephen Amell is such a great actor and he's a really cool person that seems like in real life. And uh, I really love Arrow. I think he has all, what it takes to play Casey Jones because Casey Jones is really tough too. So I'm actually really excited for this casting and it's making me even more excited for this sequel. And speaking of the Ninja Turtles, uh, if you're not reading the comics, maybe you should give them a try. There was actually a really I'm not going to spoil it here, but there was a major character death in IDW's recent Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comic series. Um, it actually has huge ramifications for the Turtles, so if you're not checking that out, uh, you might want to. So Stephen Amell is going to be Casey Jones, and if you're not reading the Ninja Turtles comics from IDW, you should definitely check those out because they seem to be very cool. And the next piece of news is that... Uh, Marvel has a new team of Avengers. They actually uh, teased the issue and why this is so interesting is because Marvel is uh, they're bringing in a lot of new faces, a lot of young faces and um, this is all surrounding the Secret Wars event or this is actually from the fallout of the Secret Wars event so this is, gives us some information uh, what happens to the Marvel Universe post Secret Wars. The new lineup consists of Thor which uh, it's a new female Thor uh, her identity hasn't been revealed yet, but it should be, I think, in Thor number 8. Uh, also, there's going to be an Iron Man. I mean, what Avengers team is there without Iron Man? But, you know, this Iron Man looks kind of different, so I think it might be an alternate version of Iron Man. Uh, Sam Wilson is still going to be Captain America, based on the cover image of the series. Uh, after Captain America, there's also going to be the Vision. Uh, looks like the Vision will be on this team also. The new Miss Marvel is going to be on this team also. I'm a big fan of hers. I think she's really cool and interesting. There's Nova, the young Nova. And then there's also, which I think is very interesting, Miles Morales, the ultimate Spider-Man. Because in my previous show, uh, if you haven't seen that one, you should check it out. I'm actually discussing that Miles Morales is probably going to play a huge part post-Secret Wars. And so this, uh, this image kind of showcases that. Miles Morales might be here to stay. This team actually looks like it has a lot of firepower. I mean, there's a lot of muscle Thor, Iron Man, Captain America, but there's also a lot of fresh faces. I mean, there's a lot of youngsters like Nova, of course, Ultimate Spider-Man, and Miss Marvel. Free comic book day, you can get this issue for free and you can see for yourself. Uh, so definitely check out the free comic book day and check out this new Avengers lineup. Another item on my news list is that 
Pacific Rim is coming out with the four issue monthly series. Uh, if you're a fan of the film Pacific Rim, you're definitely going to want to check this out. The four issue series is called Pacific Rim Tales from the Drift. Tales from the Drift is going to be brought to us from director Guillermo del Toro and screenwriter Travis Beachman. Uh, it's going to be written by Joshua Fialkov and illustrated by Marcus Mars. The series itself is supposed to expand on the uh, Pacific Rim universe and it's also supposed to introduce new Jaegers as well as uh, new Kaiju creatures. So I, I like the film, I thought it was really cool. Uh, I can't wait for the sequel, so in between now and the sequel, uh, I'm definitely looking forward to reading this comic. And the last piece of news on my list has to do with Dragon Ball Z. Uh, I'm a huge Dragon Ball Z fan, so I was really excited when I learned that uh, there was another movie coming out. Uh, this one's actually kind of a sequel to the previous one, Dragon Ball Z Battle of the Gods. Uh, this is Dragon Ball Z The Resurrection of F, which uh, F stands for Frieza, so any fans of the show really know who Frieza is and you can check out who Frieza is or you can watch the whole series in its entirety. But uh, this film actually debuted April 11th in a select theater in the US, I think believe in California, and it makes its wide release April 18th um, in Japan and then in America it's set to release this summer. So I'm really excited to see this one. I'm a big Dragon Ball Z fan. So I'm really excited for Dragon Ball Z The Resurrection of F to debut in theaters this summer here in uh, America. So Dragon Ball Z fans, you got something to be really excited for. I know I am, so I will definitely check this one out. And now for comics reviews. And the first issue up for review is Marvel's The Inhumans number zero. Uh, this one is a really cool comic. I was really happy with it. Uh, it focuses on Black Bolt, uh, the, cover, the character on the cover, as he looks for his son. I don't want to give away too much, but He's on a mission to find his son. What's really special about this issue is that there's a lot of really interesting interactions and it actually makes a pretty good prelude to uh, Marvel's Secret Wars. This issue is written by Charles Soule with art by Steve McNiven, uh, interior art and cover art by Steve McNiven, uh, coloring by Justin Ponzer and inks from Jay Liston. Soul starts this series off with a lot of intensity as we see Black Bolt, uh, no nonsense Black Bolt as you can see by the cover with the arrows sticking out of him. No nonsense Black Bolt's on a mission and it definitely reflects the kind of dire situation that the Inhumans are in. Uh, so I thought that was really cool. And of course Steve McNiven's art is beautiful. Uh, you can see I love his cover art and his interior art is just as good. He's definitely at the top of his game. And uh, the coloring and inking are just perfect. I mean they definitely highlight the story and McNiven's artwork. This issue actually has an interesting backup story that introduces a few Inhumans that I guess I didn't know of. And actually it introduces one of the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. characters, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the mysterious Gordon actually makes his first appearance here. And uh, it's kind of an interesting interaction. Definitely a, a cool added feature that I really appreciated. The only thing that I, I didn't think too highly of is that this issue comes with a $4.99 price tag. And that seems to be the new norm, which is unfortunate because uh, these things are getting more and more expensive as it is. So this issue will cost you $4.99, but I actually think it's worth it. It's a really good story, a great start to this series. So I would definitely look for the next issue. Uh, the next issue up for review is Invincible number 118. Uh, this issue is meant to be a jumping on point for new readers, as most of the, the first few pages kind of recount his history uh, from the very beginning all the way up until the present. And so I really like that. That helped me, you know, catch up some of the places I've missed. Another huge incentive for why I picked up this book is, as you can see, there's a 25 cent price tag. Uh, so this book cost me 25 cents as a full issue. Most books are now costing $4.99, so I thought that was great about this book. Uh, this issue is written by series creator Robert Kirkman, illustrated by Ryan Otley, long -time, he's a long time uh, artist on this series. Uh, he does the interior and cover art for this issue. And it's colored by Jean Francois uh, Beaulieu. So, after the first few pages of series recap, uh, we pick up where it's left off with uh, Invincible, Adam Eve, and their new daughter, their newborn Tara, uh, starting life on a new planet. I think Kirkman deserves a lot of credit because he's wrote this series from the very beginning, and uh, he always managed to put a lot of drama. Uh, humor and definitely a conflict in every issue and this one's the same there's all there's a lot of funny moments especially I think it's a real testament to his skills as uh, he seamlessly jumps from uh, from serious moments to funny ones and back again 
But yeah, Kirkman does a great job. I really love the Invincible series because of his writing. And also, of course, Otley does great work. I love Ryan Otley's work. I've loved Ryan Otley's illustrations since he took over the book. I think they're really detailed and uh, they're some of my favorite. He's one of my actual favorite artists. Uh, but yeah, they're really detailed and they're a great selling point for the book also. Otley puts a lot of energy and intensity into every panel. Bolu's coloring work really complements his illustrations, so Bolu deserves a lot of credit too. Um, overall, this issue is really fun. It's a good starting point, uh, so definitely new readers should check this one out. And at 25 cents, I don't see why you wouldn't. I mean, this is a great issue. 25 cents, uh, I would definitely pick this up. The next issue up for review is Avengers Ultron Forever. Uh, this is a really fun comic. Uh, I'm a big fan of dystopian uh, post-apocalyptic future stories and this one is also in that same vein. So I really, as soon as I found out that, I definitely wanted to pick up this book. The premise of this book is uh, fairly simple. Uh, it's a post-apocalyptic future where uh, Ultron is all-powerful and heroes are gathered together from alternate timelines to try and defeat him. This issue is the first in the three-issue miniseries, and it is written by Al Ewing, with uh, cover and interior art from legendary artist Alan Davis, uh, inked by Mark Farmer, and colored by Rochelle Rosenberg. As far as uh, dystopian future post-apocalyptic stories, uh, this one's fairly by the book. It uh, has a lot of familiar tropes, but it does have some genuinely shocking moments that I, I thought were pretty kind of shocking. I wasn't expecting, or I didn't see it coming. So actually, uh, that made for this book to be a very fun read. Uh, Ewing kicks things into high gear, and there's a lot of action in this issue, as well as a lot of interesting interactions and moments. Davis really shines in this book. Uh, he's a prolific illustrator. Uh, he always does a really great job, and his illustrations have a lot of detail, and there's a lot of action in every, uh, every panel that he draws. And of course, Farmer and Rosenberg's uh, inks and coloring definitely add to this issue. Uh, bringing it to life. My only real issue with this, I mean, I, I was kind of expecting it to be a run-of-the-mill dystopian future, but it was it was fun, had some surprising moments. But it's another $4.99. This is a $4.99 book. Uh, so that seems to be the trend here. $4.99, these books are going up. But overall, uh, Avengers Ultron Forever was a lot of fun, and uh, I'm actually looking forward to reading the other issues. Uh, the next book I read was Hoax Hunters from the publisher Heavy Metal. What's interesting about this comic is that it was actually originally published by Image Comics. Uh, I haven't read the original series, but, but now it's with Heavy Metal Comics, and the story is continued from the previous Image series. So Hoax Hunters is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, there's a team of paranormal investigators. Uh, they do more than just investigate. They actually keep the dark forces at bay. This issue is co-written by Michael Morrissey and uh, Steve Seeley with illustrations from Christian Dabari and coloring from Mike Spicer. Morrissey and Seeley continue the story from the previous Image series, uh, so prior knowledge of the Image series is actually really important uh, before jumping in this issue. Uh, this series is directly tied into the previous series, and so it's kind of hard to uh, offer a commentary on this issue on its own merits. But uh, that should really please uh, fans of the original series, because it's a direct continuation of that. Fans of the previous series will be probably pretty happy to learn that it definitely it directly continues from that. But at the same time, for newcomers like myself, I had a really hard time following it. There is a synopsis and character bios, but they put it at the end of the book instead of the beginning. So I kind of I don't usually flip to the end first. So. Once I got to the very end, I kind of got a better idea of what was going on prior to the events of this series. But it would have been nice if it would have been at the beginning. And I still think you probably want to read the original series to get the full scope of what's going on in this one. Uh, the story itself does show a lot of promise. Uh, there's a lot of really interesting characters and concepts. Uh, Dabari's art is actually really cool and well suited to the story. It's, it's very dark and guttural and uh, it adds a lot of mystery to this series, which is great because this is a horror slash mystery series. And along with Spicer's coloring work, it adds a lot to this haunting atmosphere. Uh, overall, I thought if the synopsis had been at the beginning, it would have helped a lot with the uh, actual story, but at the same time, I think I still would have need to have read the previous series 
to really get a full grasp of this story. Not to say it's bad, I just kind of wish this might have been a reboot instead of a continuation. But, I mean, fans of the previous series are going to be really happy that this is a direct continuation instead of a reboot. Uh, so, Hoax Hunters number one, it, it's a strong read. Uh, I'm going to definitely have to go back and look for previous issues from the Image series. But, uh, Hoax Hunters number one was actually a pretty good read. And the final comic up for review is DC's Convergence number zero. This is the start of DC's uh, universe shattering event, Convergence. And it features uh, the new 52 Superman. Uh, captured and tortured by an all-powerful Brainiac. So this issue is co-written by Dan Jurgens and Jeff King uh, with interior cover art from Ethan Van Skyver and coloring from Marcelo Maiolo. I was really hoping this issue would kick off the Convergence event in a big way. Uh, I was expecting a lot from it and unfortunately I don't think it delivered. Uh, not to say that this written badly, it's actually written fine. Uh, Jurgens and King do a fine job of writing this series, but by the time I got to the end of this issue, I felt that this should have been an eight-page story or less, or just a, a backup story. I don't feel that it really warranted the 30 pages and 4.99 price tag. Uh, that that's just my opinion. I think die-hard DC fans and event collectors are gonna want this issue, but for the most part, I felt it was just filler uh, before the main series. I think Van Skyver's art is a real highlight of this book, and if you were buying the book for his artwork alone, then yeah, it would definitely be worth it because he does a great job in this issue. And I also think Maiolo's coloring work does a real great job of complementing his illustrations. There's also kind of a backup feature in this issue, it's like who's who of the Convergence universe, so it kind of gives you some, a little bit of backstory, what worlds and realities are participating in the Convergence event. So that, that was interesting in itself. I'm still really excited for the main Convergence series, but uh, Convergence number zero itself kind of left me disappointed. So uh, unless you're a real diehard fan who has to pick up every event book tie-in, uh, I think I would probably leave this one on the shelves. And on this segment of Cover the Cover, I'll be discussing the cover for Incredible Hulk number 162. This amazing cover was illustrated by Herb Trimp and ink by Sal Trapani with coloring from David Hunt. Herb Trimp passed away this April 14th of 2015, so this segment is in honor of him and his incredible contributions to the comic book industry. Trimp is regarded by fans and comic professionals alike as one of the greatest artists in the comics history and he'll be remembered for his many works but especially his standout work on The Incredible Hulk. Uh, Incredible Hulk number 162 came out in April of 1973 and it features the first colossal battle between the Wendigo and The Incredible Hulk. There's so much to love about this cover as we not only get to see the Hulk facing off with the Wendigo, but we also get to see the fallout from the battle in glorious detail as vehicles, people, uh, trees are smashed in the aftermath. I really love the 70s era logo and title lettering. Uh, they really make this cover seem larger than life. Incredible Hulk number 162 is definitely one of my favorite covers and just looking at all the details on this amazing cover and you can see why. And now for a new segment of top five. After watching the first season of Attack on Titan and thinking about the new Dragon Ball Z film that's coming out this summer, I was thinking that for this segment of Top 5, I'll discuss my Top 5 Favorite Animes. Number 5 on my list is Akira. Akira is one of the most revered Japanese animation films. I remember watching it in the 10th grade when my friend let me borrow it, and I remember not really understanding it and not liking it because I didn't understand it. But as I got older and started to understand it, I really came to enjoy it. Akira had a lot of dark themes and political undertones, and at that time, I really didn't understand those things. But as I got older, I really came to appreciate them, so that made me really enjoy Akira that much more. So I really came to appreciate the themes of friendship and loyalty uh, in the face of immense horror. Uh, Akira is the story of what happens when uh, uh, someone's given godlike power and they completely lose control and all you have is your friend there to back you up. Well, Akira was more of a slow burn and it kind of slowly worked its way into my heart 
but now that it's there, I really love it, and I would recommend it uh, to any anime fan. Uh, number four on my list is Gundam Wing. Uh, Gundam Wing is a politically themed anime with a lot of action. Uh, the premise of Gundam Wing is that Earth is at war with its uh, near space colonies, and uh, the uh, catalyst, or not the catalyst, but the actual instruments of war are these giant mechanized robots called Gundams. So Gundam Wing is actually part of a larger series uh, spinning out of Mobile Suit Gundam, but uh, Gundam Wing is my favorite series uh, to branch out from there. Gundam Wing has a lot of action, but it also has more mature themes, and definitely the political undertones were something that I came to enjoy a lot. So there are a lot of anime out there with giant robots, but for me Gundam Wing is the best, and I would definitely recommend it to anybody to check it out. So number three on my list is the Vampire Hunter D films. Vampire Hunter D is another post-apocalyptic story about a half-human, half-vampire named D. The films are based on the 26 novels by writer Hideyuki Kikuchi. I'm a huge fan of science fiction and horror, especially post-apocalyptic fiction, uh, so I really could get into this series because of that. There's a lot of really intense and exceptional action in this series. There's a lot of really great animation here. And the story itself is really good. My favorite aspect about these films is actually the main character, D, uh, and the films because they remind me of the uh, Sergio Leone Spaghetti Westerns. Those are some of my favorite films, and D reminds me of The Man With No Name. Uh, there's a lot of action and uh, a really great story. That's one of the reasons I love this series. Number two on my list is the anime Rurouni Kenshin, or Samurai X. This show is based on a famous manga and features a samurai who's a master swordsman who's actually taken an oath not to kill anymore and so the adventures take him from place to place as he helps people. This anime is actually a period piece set in feudal Japan and uh, what I love about this series is there's a great story, incredible animation, and really great characters. What I really love about this series are the intense action sequences. Uh, there's a lot of really great samurai fighting scenes, as well as the characters. I really like Kenshin. I like that he's a man who's trying to uh, trying to avoid taking lives to repent for you know, a dark past. So I really love Rurouni Kenshin, and I think it's one of the best anime series. It's number two on my list, so uh, definitely if you like intense action sequences, some great sword fighting, uh, definitely give Rurouni Kenshin a chance. My number one pick uh, for my top five favorite anime is none other than uh, Dragon Ball Z. Uh, I'm a huge Dragon Ball Z fan. Uh, I remember growing up, me and my brothers and sister, uh, we'd race home from school to watch Dragon Ball Z. So we've been fans for a long time. Dragon Ball Z is about a character named Goku. and He basically um, fights anybody and everybody who would try and do harm to the planet. Along the way, he meets a ton of friends and he also meets a lot of enemies, of course, because there's a lot of fighting in the series. But since Goku's such a great guy, a lot of the, his greatest enemies end up becoming some of his greatest allies. Uh, there is so much action in this series. Uh, anybody who remembers the, the word Kamehameha kind of knows what I'm talking about here. And my favorite battle is, of course, Vegeta versus Goku for the first time. I think it's my favorite because this was well before they started using a lot of energy blasts for everything. And there, there actually looks to be a lot of skill and technique in their fighting. And so this, this first battle is really incredible to me, and it, it's my favorite of all of the battles throughout the series. So eventually, after getting older, uh, of course I started to see how uh, kind of cheesy this series is, but there's still a lot of fun, and the battles are just as great as they were back when I was a kid. So I still really enjoy watching this series. And uh, I love it a lot, and I would definitely recommend it to anyone who enjoys action anime. My top pick is Dragon Ball Z. So that's it for the 12th episode of First Edition, the All Things Comics, Film, and Pop Culture web show. I'm George, and my YouTube channel is Uncanny George. So if you like the show, uh, please like, share, subscribe, comment. Um, all of these things would help me, and I really appreciate it. And so thank you for watching, and uh, I appreciate your support.